also to help you and support you uh, the initiatives of uh, Win Active and Women City. Uh, Hi, welcome to the latest edition of Win Active webcast. It's great to have you and for everyone to, to join us today and, and what a webcast we've got for you today. But before we go too far, I'd like to introduce my partner in crime, James Robertella. James, how are you today? Yeah, really good. Thank you, Barry. Once again, um, fantastic to uh, for everyone to join us for another Win Active webcast. And as we know, we've got some fantastic um, aquatics facilities within uh, Wyndham at Aquapulse and the outdoor pool and um, we very dearly look forward to being able to uh, utilise those facilities again and uh, I think um, we do have some fantastic guests that are going to give us a bit of an insight into um, into everything aquatic recreation. Oh look we do and I'm really excited uh, to have Cathy Parton and Taya Phillips join us today. It's, we're taking a little bit of a different bent today in that normally we focus on the Wyndham community but I thought it was very important to have Kathy and Taya here to talk about Aquatic and Recreation Victoria and the impact this is having on on all of Victoria and the aquatics industry especially but Taya, Kathy, welcome, how are you? We're well thank you Barry and James thanks for having us. Yeah thank you very much. Oh look, it's 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 great to have you here, um, and and talking to to us and and the Greater Wyndham community. Um, first of all, Kathy, you're the CEO of Aquatics and Recreation Victoria. What a what is Aquatics and Recreation Victoria for everyone, and what's the CEO do? Well, thanks, Barry. That's a great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, oh, you may know. I I, I just stepped role at the end of November last year so it's certainly been a whirlwind since then um, from the January bushfires and air quality issues and so on to now moving into the COVID-19 issues. Um, what is ARV? ARV is the peak association of the aquatics and recreation industry. We're a not-for-profit organisation that provides support, professional development, networking opportunities um, for those in the industry who are who either plan, build, service, um, operate um, and support aquatic and recreation facilities across Victoria. So that's who we are and, and our mission is all about, you know, working together for a better industry. Oh, I love that. Fantastic. <laughs> and of course, uh, being involved in this industry for a long time, um, what a great mission. Um, Taya, you're the Member Services and Events Coordinator. So um, what do you, what's that mean? But tell us about the awards night, which, was, which is famous and infamous in the industry. <laughs> yes, well, unfortunately it was supposed to be next month, but there's a bit of a hold on that at the moment. But yes, we have quite a... a, a, a big event calendar. It's a large 12-month event calendar for the aquatic and recreation industry. So not only in um, the, the aquatic and rec centres, but that includes all the councils and suppliers and anyone that has anything to do um, with an, a, a pool or a gym. If you think about who's involved in an aquatic centre, it's very, very, uh, very, very widespread from your tile companies to your pool chemicals to your gym equipment and then your management of those companies. Um, so we, we provide a lot of professional development and a lot of events to support that industry. So lots of conferences, lots of professional development, workshops, seminars. And we do have quite a famous awards night. Um, it is themed every year. So, um, and that is ha happens in June and we have around 700 people come to that. And it's a big celebration of all those who work in the industry and all the facilities um, within the state and Western Leisure has been lucky enough to win several awards in the past so so that's been great. Unfortunately with the current situation um, we we have had to postpone that event in June but we are still hoping to run it towards the end of the year so obviously nominations are open at the moment um, and we're still encouraging the industry to recognise their staff during this time. It's still a valuable time to, to celebrate and recognise the facilities. Um, but hopefully that that's something that we can still uh, pursue in the future. Mm. 
So, you know, you, you sort of touched on, I guess, how um, this current COVID-19 situation has impacted ARV and uh, maybe to you, Cathy, and, and, and both Taylor, I suppose, apart from obviously um, centres having to close their doors and, and, and people not allowed in, how has this current crisis impacted the industry? Um, you know, how are you seeing the, the, the current situation? Um, well, not surprisingly, like many other industries, it's affected us considerably. Um, both from, you know, there's been substantial financial impact on many operators of the industry. Um, we've got community members who are very used to, um, you know, what, what they do each week from a recreation perspective that has just been completely shut down. Um, We've got an industry where there's been a lot of um, job losses as well as job employment impacts. Um, you know, so there, there have been considerable significant negative impacts. Um, I think you're probably going to ask me this about what might have been the positives <laughs> or what are emerging as the positives. Do you want me to move into that? Well, we certainly yeah. like to focus on the positives. So <laughs> please, please, Cathy. So, you know, along with that, and, and, you know, I suppose what is also out there is a bit of an anxiety around the future and what the new normal is going to look like. You know, there's a real concern around community confidence um, in coming back into the industry, you know, the participation, the attendance. Um, you know, we have seen some membership losses, some sponsorship um, declines, so, you know, there, there, is a, there is a concern and an anxiety, but there also is a bit of a growing sort of excitement for what the new normal could be. And I've certainly seen innovation in this industry. So, Barry, you talked about, you know, your organisation providing a lot of online opportunities for the community. Um, that seems to be happening right across the industry and people have pushed through barriers that, they thought they'd never be able to overcome, whether it's a local government procurement area or communications team who have previously said no to a lot of things, have um, are now saying yes, because it's it's going to be the way that um, these organisations can continue to connect with their communities and their and their employees, which therefore will make the transition back a lot a lot more straightforward. So, yeah. Hey, um, you deal with, you talk to people in the industry every day um, and you're very, very good at that in, in keeping those communication lines open. What are you hearing from the industry and people who are, you know, well, it's their livelihood and it has been for many years? Yeah, I think um, obviously with a, a lot of the facilities closed and a lot of staff being stood down, um, that the, that's a huge issue at the moment. And, all uh, you know, our industry is very much the, the employees in this industry it's a passion for the industry so to see um, their livelihood close that's you know that's a real concern but I think majority of um, the staff in this industry have a, a really big concern of their members as well it's a big community mm. impact that this has happened um, learn to swim you know that's going to have impacts on on children as well so there's a um, I think from a from an employee point of view, they are concerned about their members. Will they come back? What's the members um, going to be doing during this time? And um, even though, yeah, there is some great things happening online at the moment, um, it is going to be a very a, a key issue to get those members back through the doors as well when, when they do reopen. Mm. It, it, it is, James. I think uh, we've discussed previously about um, the members and the members that we've had and even just their ability to, to pay for their membership moving forward may be difficult. Um, yeah. you know, what, what, what's your thoughts at, at the council level, James, on that? Yeah, look, I think there's going to be um, certainly some challenges um, more broadly um, with access to facilities and services, and I think that's going to be addressed the, you know, um, each step of the way and as we begin to come out of that and I suppose I don't have the answers at, at the <laughs> no, moment Barry no. but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very interested to 
you know, to, to hear Kathy and Taya's thoughts because I, I know you, you two, are, uh, you know, ARV are connected to some of the biggest centres um, across Victoria and we're talking about thousands of people here and, and um, you know, it, it's about bringing them back and it's about connecting with the staff. So I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm keen to know from, from your perspective, Kathy and Taya, what, you know, what it looks like on, on the other side. And, and you mentioned you're excited about some of the initiatives, Kathy, that that, that might um, come out of this current crisis. But yeah, is there, is there anything specific that, you, you know, you, you're, you're particularly excited about or, or working on? Um, what it's going to look like on the other side, I mean, the whole way through this crisis, we, we've been doing a, a range of online forums with different parts of the industry and certainly the facility managers really for a number of weeks have been talking about the scenario planning they've been doing in looking at you know what might be the changes they need to make within their facilities whether it's to support um, spatial distancing you know in redesigning their facilities to increasing their cleaning you know contracts and so on so there's a lot of operational change um, let alone you know what's the um, staffing and administration that's going to be required when you're talking about a staged um, staged introduction to renewing you know the participation so yeah I think I mean there's some of the, the changes I think a lot of people are talking about you know this working from home concept and these new communication tools that we now have all become experts in you know zoom Microsoft teams and so on utilising those things into the future and being able to um, connect with others in a much more simple way, uh, even just to reduce, you know, the, much, the amount of car travel and, and to other meetings um, and so on. So, you know, I think there are a lot of changes that we've made that I think potentially will continue for the better. Industry as well, we are such an operational industry um, that you know, everyone has their to-do list every day and you get so caught up with what happens there and then and things that need to be daily that um, a lot of the strategic and planning sort of drops off and it's been very evident at this time when the facilities are actually shut, it is now such a good time for those facilities to develop new programs and to plan for the future and to get, you know, things fixed in their facilities and, um, yeah, I think when we come back, there's going to be a lot of great new initiatives that are going to come out of it because during this downtime, it is a great time for people to actually plan and do some strategic thinking for the future as their yeah. to -do, daily to-do list um, mm -hmm. won't be happening. So those sort of tasks that, you know, you always say, oh, I'll get to that one day, you, yeah. you basically have time to do that now. Let's talk about these new um, strategies, the online um, you know, ways they've gone about that. Um, they have reached new um, markets, if you like. So they've tapped into people that they actually wouldn't have before. And so, you know, they are definitely all talking about continuation of that into the future and looking at how they might be able to do that. In your discussions with the industry, um, and certainly internally at, at at WLS when active, we're throwing up scenario after scenario yeah. and what we can and can't do. But what's the biggest challenge we as an industry, the aquatics industry, uh, are, are facing coming out of this? Um, you know, you, yeah, what's the biggest challenge? What are you hearing? Um, getting people back into Well, centers, I think, I I think, think that's, yeah. that's the big one is about you know, at least getting back to a maintenance um, of what was as far as membership and participation. Yep. Um, you talked about affordability, you know, there have been a lot of people who have been hit hard, so that's, that's, um, that's a priority. I think even, you know, one of the impacts has been financially, as we said, people have had to do a lot of reforecasting of their budgets for this year and for next year. And there, are, there have been increased costs over the hibernation period. So I think another big challenge for these organisations is just their financial sustainability. Sort of sits alongside the membership um, 
and participation issue, but those are probably two of the bigger ones. Mm. Yeah. So many online things mm. happening at the moment. I think Petition. there is a big yeah. concern that um, how many people are now going to just continue doing mm. their, their fitness in their lounge room or continue mm. walking walk in the streets and think, well, you know, I'm still exercising. Do I need to go back to my local aquatic and recreation facility as well? So um, mm. I think to try and get a sense of um, community and socialising and there's some other things to get people back into the facility um, to get it more of a community hub again. Mm. I think that's a great point, Taya, that you're, uh, that you're bringing about that sort of community hub because these, these centres are, mm. you know, they're reflective of their communities. They're, they're a chance for people to socialise. Um, so I believe strongly that that, that will bring people to, mm. together and and Barry I'm sure you agree that it, it's great to have ARV there connecting the the wider industry to ensure that when we do open and and when the fantastic Win active and WLS um, centers do open that we have in Wyndham um, we're doing so with um, with the right um, measures in place um, um, and at the right timing and everything so everyone has full confidence that they can come back and enjoy what um, what they had previously. And, and I'm sure, like you know, we know that, um, you know, the benefit of this industry to the health and well-being of our community. And so that's really a key for us to promote going forward around just what are the benefits of these facilities and services um, across the industry. Mm. Oh, look, um, I agree with all of that. Um, I just want to, uh, you mentioned about ARV, but you, you guys have been really proactive You've taken a lead um, in uh, trying to bring the industry together. And I think just, you know, from a little bit of a distance, but are you seeing that the industry is probably coming together more than it has before as well in this time of crisis? Very much so. Yeah, I think we've been with our organisation for eight years, so she can talk to her. And I'll, I'll be happy to share some of my observations too. I think now than more than ever, um, I guess a lot of competitors are joining together um, because it's it's a point now where everyone needs to share, everyone's in this together, um, the whole industry needs to rebuild as a whole. Uh, so I think, yeah, it's, it's very evident that the industry is more connected now than ever and more willing to help each other and share ideas. Um, we've been running weekly meetings online um, for all our different um, industry, from managers to, to swim school to health club to suppliers, and everyone's more than happy to help each other out and send plans across mm -hmm. to each other and documents, and um, that's real. It's a really good collaboration. And one of the one of the things that has a lot of our energy in the last few weeks um, is we've been working with other industry leaders also in a weekly um, forum um, to develop an advocacy paper that's now gone to the Victorian government and to the federal government. And so we've worked with others with that advocacy paper and we're pleased to say that, you know, that was finalised last week and off and um, we're hoping to have some ministerial meetings to be able to sort of push some of these asks, um, you know, which really is a mix of things from, you know, the reopening of facilities to a stimulus package for our industry to actually support the industry to be able to reboot and um, and and strengthen going forward. Fantastic. Thank you. And um, I think we've got a little taste there of the enormity of the impact um, as well as what ARB are doing to A, support the industry, but also advocate on behalf of the industry. But it's that time, James, where mm. we, we get a little bit personal, um, but it's about <laughs> being grateful. It's about being positive and, and looking for the, 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 the good things that we, that we need to look for and not focusing on the negative. So um, perhaps I'll start with you, Taya, because you are always smiling. You are always <laughs> happy. I don't think I've ever seen a frown on your face. Taya, right. what are you grateful for today? Well, I'm grateful that, you know, we're, we're still working and helping support the industry. So we're very lucky in, in that point of view. Um, I guess, you know, during these times, even, um, you know, working from home, um, my dog's fitter than ever. Um, <laughs> 
my the dog um yes my my four-legged son uh is a, a bulldog and doesn't like to exercise and doesn't like to walk and he's being walked daily much to his disgust so um you know i think you get you appreciate some of the smaller things i think you're quite often so caught up in in work and um you know every day everyday life that you kind of forget the the important little things and being at home you know you get to appreciate those things more you get more time i mean the hour that i generally travel to work and travel home i've actually actually been going for a run and exercising that i've never done in my life so you know those extra two hours and just the time to you know cook some good dinners and things like that um i think yeah from a lifestyle thing type of things it's um good to reflect on that but I think most importantly um, for us to still be able to service the industry and help out, um, you know, our members, that's really important. Oh, super stuff. Kathy? Yeah, actually. So, yeah, one, having a job and continuing to be able to work and probably, you know, be in this industry at this time and really be able to support the industry and hopefully have an impact on the industry has been really wonderful. Um, I think it's um, having the opportunity because we are both in the office today and we haven't been doing that. We have been working from home, but we do have the luxury because we, um, you know, there aren't many people here that can come in here. So if cabin fever hits, we've got the, the luxury of being able to come to the office. It's been beneficial, I must admit, over the last few weeks. Um, same as Taya, just the opportunity to be at home. Um, we actually have a new puppy in our family, which has turned out to be the best timing ever. Um, that's been good. Um, and to get some things done around the house, that's, you know, my partner and I can't believe what we've been able to achieve. So that's the positive too, as well as, you know, we love where we live and to be able to go and get to the parks and, um, you know, walk and enjoy that place in a way in a, in a sort of more um not as frantic sort of way um it's it's sort of relaxing yeah it has it, it's sort of set a different pace for life which is quite interesting so um yeah there's some of the positives i think oh fantastic yes. <laughs> yeah. i think we can both relate to that james can't we yeah yes Look, oh, it's wonderful to hear, and um, yeah, I think talking about the positives always brings out a smile um, and you know a chance to reflect. Um, and so, for for me today, Barry, and and what we're grateful for, and and Taya and Kathy, you, you might know, but the challenge for Barry and I is we um, each and every time we've got to win active webcasts where um, we've, we've got to be grateful for something. So we we tend to get creative and and sometimes focus on the smaller things, but um, also those large and important parts um, in our lives. And um, as much as I'm missing my gym and and getting indoors. Um, I am grateful today for our all the wonderful parks that have got close by me here um, and just getting out of the house and being able to enjoy those green spaces. And I think we've touched on before, Barry, that they're looking as green as ever before because, you know, the local sports not being able to use um, those parks, um, you know, that might change moving forward. But um, for now, yeah, being able to really enjoy um, those facilities that are available Look, that's a great point, um, James, in that I, everywhere, the rare occasion I actually hop in the car, which is probably once a week to drive to the supermarket, but um, you do see so many people out, yes. out and about walking, the parks, the, along the beach, I live near the beach, um, it, and it's just wonderful to see, isn't it, Cathy? Oh, absolutely, and, uh, you know, for years in my previous roles, I've, we've been advocating, you know, to government through health promotion, sort of funding for preventative health and, you know, increasing physical activity within cities and so on. And I, I just, it takes a crisis, doesn't it, to get people moving, but they are and, you know, all we can do is hope that that continues. Mm. Absolutely. Barry, um, what about you today, mate? <laughs> How, what are you uh, grateful for? Look, uh, today's, um, and it's, it's reinforced... Uh, my thoughts and I, I work in an industry with passionate people 
and Kathy and Taya, you would see that every day as well. And I've worked in a number of organisations within the industry, um, but there are passionate people at every centre. They love their centre, they love their members, they love teaching people, whether that's a group fitness instructor, a, a gym instructor, a swim teacher, a lifeguard, and they just love what they do. They love the interaction with the members and other patrons. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful that I do work in an industry full of passionate people. As well as, I'm grateful, we're another day closer to Lego Masters Grand Final, James. <laughs> <laughs> what about yes. MasterChef? Oh, no, I don't get it. <laughs> 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 the other day on this... Um, Kathy and Taya, you know, what we're grateful for. And I said, I don't get into reality TV, but I love Lego Masters. And uh, and we're, we're another day closer. It's Thursday now. So on <laughs> Sunday, Sunday and Monday is the grand final. So wow. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> You're not on your own. It's got a great following, hasn't it? <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, we started watching it as a bit of a joke, but um, yeah, <laughs> my wife and I really get into it, which which is mm. fun. But coming back to the real, the, what I wanted to say was about being in an industry full of passionate people, and um, yeah, just really, really grateful for that, for sure. Guys, I just want to say thanks very much for today. It's been an absolute delight and uh, insightful as well. Um, yeah, to be able to speak to you to understand what you're doing, uh, how you're helping the industry, um, as well as by helping the industry, you're helping all of us, not only the people that work in the industry, but the communities that we service as well. So thanks very much, Kathy, and thank you, Taya. Thanks for having us. Our pleasure. Oh, it's been fantastic. James, as always, it's been great, mate. Brilliant. No, another wonderful webcast and, yeah, bringing um, some more information out to, to all of the Wyndham community to, to, to provide some more perspective on, on what is going on at the moment. But for everyone out there, please stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay active, uh, continue to find your 30 um, if you haven't had a chance to, to get out there and, and, and find your 30 minutes of activity, please do so. Um, you might be able to put this on the phone and, and put the headphones in and go for a walk and listen to our um, wonderful conversations. But I appreciate your time, Kathy and, and Taya, and um, thank you again, Barry. Thanks, guys. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.